I'm Dave, this is Cider Baby Pod, and today I'm talking to the legend that is Blaze Bailey. Hello. Hello, it's me. It's you. You're looking well, man. Thank you very, very much. I'm really much better than I deserve to be. <laughs> the, you know, with, with what I do, I'm so lucky. After Brexit and COVID and everything, people are still coming to my shows and playing to more people at the small venues that I like to play. Uh, some are selling out. Yeah. My new album is called War Within Me. Mm. And I've got 11 studio albums solo since I made them. And my fans that have followed me for so many years, many of them say that War Within Me is my best ever album, which is fantastic to be making music which people feel is better than what I've done before, yeah. considering my age and experience. <laughs> so it's really good. And the album came out of the idea that my fans have supported me so much through thick and thin and when i wasn't always the best they've been so loyal and stood by me that they've been waiting two years for a blaze bailey album and i wanted it to be an album that with covid and everything else that was going on when they got it it was oh it's my blaze bailey album and it's good so something that people could really feel positive about. And yeah. so when we talked about the album in the beginning, we often do this with the projects that we do. What would we like the project to feel like at the end, even though we have nothing now at the end of it all, what would we like it to feel like? And the answer was very simple, positive. It has to be positive, has to be uplifting, life affirming and inspirational that if you feel you need an extra lift or a little bit of a push at the gym, yeah, you can put that album on. If you feel that you need a bit of extra energy, get yourself going for your day, put that on. If you want to have something to distract you, put the Blaze Bailey album on and give yourself an hour away from the world and feel better at the end of it. So okay. we were very, very careful with the way that we structured the songs, the chords that we used, the way that the melodies and the rhythms fitted together. We wanted to take people on a journey that they could escape and forget the world just for a little while and that people would think, well, I'm not alone. So that message has come through. We've done a great tour so far. Next year is part two of that right. tour. And the songs that we haven't yet played live from the album, we're very excited about playing live. And in the breaks from all this, I managed to make a new Wolfsbane album as well. It's called Genius. It's the original band the all original lineup from the first wolf spain album we managed to get together within the rules of the lockdown and be certain distance apart in the studio and all of this <laughs> yeah and it's it's just turned out absolutely wonderful and there's some kind of magic that happens when the four of us in wolf spain get into a room together and this time we were just egging each other on. Oh, doesn't that sound a little bit like we used to say? Yeah, and that's why it's good. Do it. And it's like, well, oh, couldn't you do a bit? What, what about them screams you used to do? Yeah. <laughs> All of this. <laughs> it's a crazy album. And if you like the old happy-go-lucky and sometimes melancholy Wolfsbane, you'll love the Genius album. Everybody that's got it enjoyed it. We did a short tour, a couple of weeks to go with it. It's absolutely fantastic. So much fun. And so many people that come with T-shirts that 
uh, uh, so old and they go, I've been in the loft for this today. <laughs> really, really, really cool. I, I don't and think I, any mine would fit. Yeah, going up to the merch is like, I need another one because that one don't fit anymore. It's the only reason, not like they really want a, a, a T-shirt for the tour, but their old Royal Spain T-shirt don't fit. So that's been a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. And in between, I've had a few festivals, some really nice medium, small, medium-sized festivals. And um, I've been booked to do my Iron Maiden anniversary set which i did at stone dead before yeah. last year and that's gone really really well when we do that it's a celebration of joining i made and all the positive things that came out of that for me and i do exclusively songs from my time with iron maiden and of course some people are interested in that era and never saw me with Maiden and some people have never heard those songs live and it's gone really, really well playing that. We've been all over Germany and France and lots of places doing it and we're going to Greece okay. in a couple of weeks doing that as well. So that's very exciting and we're just starting to think about some ideas for a, a brand new Blaze Bailey studio album. Wow. I mean, that, that's good news. I mean, like you said, The War Within, Within Me was absolutely superb. I actually rate that higher than what you did with Maiden and everything else before that. I, like you said, it is a really, really good album. Thank um, you. So what, uh, so what is on the horizon then, um, gig-wise, in this country? Is there anything... Yeah, we've got a couple of shows coming up. We've got one in Scotland. You'll have to excuse me because my memory no, is don't worry. like since COVID, I can't remember a single thing. It's absolutely horrific. So let me just have a look here. Uh, right, what we got coming up? We've got uh, what is it? Winter storm. Yeah, in Scotland and that's in november yes so yeah we're going to oh let me i need i need glasses for this you know this is <laughs> that you this is what it's like when you're 100. oh you're not that ah, right yeah <laughs> i've got heavy metal maniacs in the netherlands on saturday the 20 2nd of October, mm -hmm. which is the fantastic festival. So, so excited about that. And I've got Greece coming up 9th of, 9th of November to 13th. Then Winter Storm is Friday the 25th of November. And I think that's the next big thing that I've got in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Planet Rockstock in Wales is Whoa. happening at Treco Bay. Yeah. That's happening Sunday, the 4th of December. It's going to be insane. Yep. Yeah. I know what the Welsh are like. They're mad. Um, so, uh, I mean, music's been your life for years and years and years. What advice would you give the younger bands coming up today give up give up don't start less competition for me you know okay oh, all right make, okay makes it much easier so yeah. it's a different world today but some things are are the same but they're in different places mm. and one thing which is true and is the, i think the biggest improvement you can do is don't stop at learning your instrument don't stop because you become a virtuoso on guitar bass drums or fantastic don't stop at that begin at that mm. then learn to record yourself and learn to record your ideas in 
at a professional standard. And it takes a long time to do that, but it's just going to be a fantastic asset for you. And there are so many figures in rock, metal, and music in general that have learned to record themselves and produce themselves. From an artistic point of view, you are not compromising, you're battling and fighting less, and your ideas have much more chance of coming out with the feeling that you intended if you learn to record yourself and produce yourself. So, as you've learned your instrument, also put the song first. Mm. Put the song first and don't get wrapped up in, oh, well, the tone of the guitar isn't uh, quite right. We'll have to remix it. Well, take a step back. People are listening to the song. Does the song make sense? Is the song boring? Why, ask yourself this question, should anybody be interested in listening to you? And that is a difficult question to answer, and you must find the answer. Why are you worthy of people's time? Why should anybody bother listening to you? What's interesting about you? Well, if you can't answer that question in a positive way, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And if you can't answer it in a positive way, the other thing is, well, what's wrong? What, well, what's wrong about where you're going? Are you really putting your heart, your passion, your ideas into your music? Is that something that's important to you or you want something else? So I think that's it for me is learn to record yourself. And of course, master social media, but yeah. never forget that if you can drag people out, get them to step away from their games console, from their Netflix, from their streaming, and you can actually get them into a venue to see you be truly awesome. <laughs> After all of that, don't just go, oh, we're here, so oh, we'll just play. No, attempt to be the best band that they will ever or have ever seen. It's a lofty ideal. It's almost unachievable, but it's something you should strive for when you're beginning. And the best way to improve is video your gigs. Yeah. So get your, this is what we did in Wolf Spain. Every time in the early days we recorded ourselves before video cameras, an audio cassette, after the gig, all the adrenaline's gone. Listen to what you did. Oh, it, you, we don't sound like Van Halen at all. We just <laughs> sound like a, a, a hideous mess. And video you gig, oh, we look like just four guys who've met on the stage. We don't even look like a band. And you can be your own best critic and survive that. Look at what you do. Is that the way that you thought you looked? Oh, there's something good I didn't know I was doing. I'll keep that. Oh, that looks embarrassing. I won't do that. And build that over your gigs. Treat every song you write as important. If you're not using it now, maybe it's not for now. Maybe it's for years down the line. But don't trivialize the things that you do. Keep them. Look back at them every so often. Sometimes they're just like kids' paintings from primary school. But sometimes there's a seed of something truly magnificent in that old idea that years later you will go, ah, that's how it works. So... I would say that to people starting out now. For me, the number one thing is my fans. Yeah. I've had record deals. I've been with different major labels. I've been with Phonogram, EMI, Geffen, Warners, 
all sorts of record labels. Now I'm independent. I'm funded directly by my fans. I own all my own music. I produce it and fund it myself. I have a wonderful team of people around me that help me. But the number one thing that we all think about is my fans. Are we giving them the best that we can possibly give them? And since they support us with so much loyalty, are we treating them well? At every Blaze Bailey gig, every headline show, there's a free meet and greet, either before or after the show. That's just included in the ticket price to say thank you to everybody for their support. So those are my values. Some people want a big payday. Some people are in it for the money. Some people want rock star status. I don't care about any of that. I just want to play my shows, write my music, and play the songs that I spent so much time on to my fans who support me and hope that they will enjoy those songs and make them part of their life. Yeah, that very, very uh, true. Uh, the fans always come first. Um, okay, so... If we've covered music and we've covered fans and we've covered most things. What about home life for Blaze Bailey? How's the family? How's, well, how's I've got a motorcycle and it's just a small old Triumph motorcycle, Speedmaster 900, nothing flashy or great, but it's reliable. Yeah. And it's not too heavy. So if it falls on me, I can actually wriggle away, <laughs> get up, get it up. You know, without the aid of a passerby, I can lift up my motorcycle, <laughs> hide my embarrassment, and ride home. So when I'm not on tour or thinking about being on tour or in the studio or anything like that, I like to ride my motorcycle to get away, and I never listen to music. I just listen to the engine and, uh, and all the various parts, and that's the music to me and when i get the opportunity i'm a wonderful wonderful manager and often i can tour the uk on my motorcycle instead of being in the van and it's just fantastic waking up at the travel lodge walking outside there's the beast and we're gonna ride baby <laughs> and turning up at the next show and last year I had great weather. I had like one spot of rain after midnight after one show when I was riding to the hotel. And it's an incredible feeling. I'm so, so lucky. And where it's customized as well, yeah. and I do jobs on it, and uh, I've got to make things for it and fiddle about with it, you know. And I had an embarrassing low speed spill in a car park last year which i had to fix some damage on it but that's a kind of meditation for me nothing to do with music i'm far mm -hmm. away from it it's just right does the blue wire go with the red wire or the green wire and will it flash that's the uh, that's the kind of meditation i have so that's what i think about really when i'm not on so of course i love movies yeah. as well and we have now some fantastic tv series as well to watch a lot of times because now the wonderful thing about streaming services you can actually download things mm. i'll go right i'll save that for the tour so if we're on tour in the van i'll go right i i saved i was like four years or three years behind everybody with game of thrones oh game <laughs> of thrones no don't tell me I've got that ready for the next tour. Next tour, you know, it's 20 shows, massive four or five hour drives. I go, I'm fine, man. I got Game of Thrones right here. So, so, that, so that's it. You know, we're, we're, we're very, very lucky, I think, in our entertainment. Yeah. Now. And occasionally, when I can, I go and see bands and new bands and bands that are established, but I've, I've never seen before. 
the other night we went down to Bristol to see Anthrax and yeah. I've seen Anthrax a couple of times. I even supported Anthrax when we were with Wolf Spain. Um, it was Anthrax Public Enemy Tour across Europe. Had a wonderful time with the lads and now on their 40th anniversary now. It's a fantastic show. They did small venue in Bristol, the O2. But you're mm. so close. Yeah. You know, the closer than you are at a lot of gigs with the barrier. It, it was really, really good. Yeah. So I, I do that as well. Normal stuff, really. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yourself occupied. I've got to say the O2 in Bristol is like a Marmite place for me. I, some play, some bands there I really love seeing there. As uh, Some bands I like. I went to see Clutcher a few years ago and I just couldn't see. It was just rammed, packed. And yeah, rammed. yeah. It was sold out this night. It was difficult to see. Yeah. Okay, man. Uh, thank you for your time. Time is getting away from us. We could talk for hours, but um, yeah. I was really looking forward to seeing you um, at... Uh, Rocking the Bowl in Sheffield, which sadly got cancelled. Hopefully, I will catch you again very soon. Okay, well, we are my people, I should say, just to sound a bit more important to pretension. Yeah. My people are involved right now with people about my next UK dates. So I'm Wonderful. very excited about that. And we'll be out next year. I've got a live album coming out as well um towards the end of the year so very exciting times and hopefully if you get the chance then we'll see you next year in the uk on tour brilliant blaze bailey thank you very much for your time love you to see you man see you later see you dave cheers <laughs>